Do you own a swimming pool? Or do you sell, install, or maintain residential or small commercial swimming pool pumps? Then we have some important information for you. This video is the second in a short series about pool pump energy savings. In the previous module of this series, we looked at the current and upcoming regulations for pool pump efficiency and the value of complying with those regulations. In this module, we look at the basics of how pool pumps work. That is, how flow rate and hydraulic system resistance relate to power demand and energy use. This will help you make smart decisions about how you set up and operate the pool's variable speed pump to maximize energy savings. So let's begin by looking at swimming pool hydraulics. For a swimming pool to have clean, healthy water, the water must flow through a system of pipes, fittings, valves, and other equipment, such as the filter, to achieve water filtration and circulation. While all of these components are needed, each adds resistance, making it more difficult for the water to flow freely. This is what is known as resistance, or head, in the hydraulic system. It takes power to enable a pool pump to overcome this resistance as it pushes the water through the system to achieve filtration and circulation. This balance between pump power and hydraulic resistance is called the operating point. It's defined by the pump flow rate in gallons per minute and the hydraulic system resistance in feet of head. In a car, the higher the speed, the lower the fuel economy. Likewise, with swimming pools, the faster the water is moving, the greater the resistance, and the greater the power needed. That is why it is more energy efficient to filter the pool water at slower speeds for longer periods of time than at higher speeds for shorter periods of time. Remember this, slower and longer. Driving to the store on the highway at 55 miles per hour might take a bit longer, but at that speed, it will use less gas than driving at 80 miles per hour. The good news for residential pool pumps is that there is no rush since they have all day to get the job done. Let's take a look at how the pool's piping diameter, which is the width of the pipes, affects the velocity, or speed, at which the water flows. Here we have two 100-foot lengths of pipe. On the left, we have the flow rates and energy losses, or resistance, for a pool with 1.5-inch piping. On the right, a pool with 2-inch piping. These are common sizes for pool piping. At a flow rate of 40 gallons per minute, for example, the 1.5 inch piping gives a water velocity of 6.5 feet per second. The 2 inch piping gives a water velocity of 3.9 feet per second, considerably slower. The more narrow piping causes water to flow at a faster rate. But the faster the water moves, the more resistance there is, and therefore the more energy is used. So you can see how a variable speed pump could be used to adjust the flow rate to suit the existing piping and reduce resistance and power demand. The pump affinity laws are the engineering principles behind what allows variable speed pumps to save so much energy. Put simply, the pump affinity laws state that flow rate has a cubic relationship with power. This means if the speed of the pump, or flow, is reduced by half, the power will be reduced to one-eighth, assuming the pipe size is held constant. Keep this in mind as we explain the basics of pool system curves, pump curves, flow, and power. While that's all for the welcome section of this module, Take a minute to answer a few questions and check your understanding of key points. Then join us for section two, 
where we compare three common pool pump systems and their related pump operating curves.